identify with witnessing. In order for transformation and to attain transcendence, each one of you has to identify with witnessing. Witnessing means you are looking at your mind, circumstances and situations without any prejudice, without any prejudgment, without any conclusion. Remember all revolutions are concerned with the outer things because revolution takes place outside such as economic structure of the society, the political structure and the state. On the contrary, rebellion is inner. It is concerned with the state of consciousness. Revolution is political, economic and social. Rebellion is spiritual and indeed a true rebellion transforms you into divinity. It reveals your Godhead and innerness to you. It reveals your Godhood and innerness to you. It makes you aware that you are neither the body nor the mind. You are neither mind, nor wisdom, nor pride, nor heart. This is what the rebellion makes you understand. Neither are you ears, nor tongue, nor nose, nor eyes. You are not identified with any of these things. Neither are you a sky, nor earth, nor power, nor wind. You are the eternal happiness or bliss state or consciousness. It happened. An eight-year-old boy, Shankar was wandering. Imagine an eight-year-old boy walking all by himself alone wandering in Mount, Himalayan mountains. Can you imagine the arduous journey? Travelling from Kerala to reach the southern peak of India to the northern mountain range. Wandering all alone in bitter cold. He was in search of his master and he, there he encountered a sage Govind Pad Acharya and he inquired from Shankar who you are and in response to the master he composed six stanzas. They are known as Nirvan Shatkam. Shatkam means a composition of six stanzas and Nirvan means salvation or transcendence. It is also known as Atma Shatkam or the composition of the being. He says that I am neither the mind nor ego sense nor intellect and nor the memory. And then he continues to explain that I am neither the wind, nor the five sheets, nor the sense organs, and he continues to disidentify himself with all those that are ephemeral. Then he says, my nature, my form is blissful. This is what it is. You are nothing but pure consciousness and that you are only a witness. Once this is experienced, realized, life becomes a play. You can engage in anything 
but there is playfulness. When misery comes, we witness to it and do not get identified with it. Do not get identified with it. All problems in life arise because we identify with the person, we identify with the body, we identify with the mind, we identify with the moods, happiness, sorrow, pain and pleasure. When misery comes, be a witness to it, as if it is not happening to you, it is happening to someone else. Happiness comes again, you witness. Sometimes it is cloudy, very cloudy and sometimes very sunny. But it is all the same to you because as far as you are concerned, you remain rooted in your witnessing, which never changes. The screen never changes. Your TV screen remains the same. What changes is the scenes that goes on changing. As the life, the play of life continues, various scenes, various acts, various people keep on appearing on the screen. But the screen never changes. It remains unmoving, unaffected by any of these things. Whether there is a murder, whether there is a wedding, it makes no difference to the screen. It is totally neutral. But it is all the same to you because as far as you are concerned, you remain rooted in your witnessing which never changes. You remain immovable and unchanging. Life is a flux and everything goes on changing. Everything is in movement, continuously moving. In life there are no nouns, only verbs. There is only one noun and that is God. Everything else is a verb because nothing else is eternal. Verb means a continuous action that is never coming to an end. That is why everything is momentary. The water is at the moment here, next moment it flows out from there. One moment it is there and next moment it is gone. That is why it is better to say rivering and loving instead of river and love. When you witness all, slowly and slowly, you are neither happy nor unhappy. And that state when neither happiness nor unhappiness bothers you or is there, is known as bliss. You are neither cold nor hot. That state is Buddhahood. You are neither man nor woman. That is called realization. And remember, even if you realize God or you are enlightened, the world continues to be the same. Illness will happen to you, old age will come, and death too. But because now you are a diff you have a different vision, everything happens and yet nothing happens to you. Because you are not identified with any of these changes that is taking place at the level of the body, at the level of the mind, at the level of thoughts. I have heard a Zen master was asked, before you be became enlightened, you used to say that you are miserable 
And now that you have become enlightened, what is the state? In what state you are now? The Master replied, I was miserable before enlightenment and I am miserable after enlightenment too. This puzzled the questionnaire. He said, then what is the difference? The Master laughed and replied, The difference is great. Before I used to get identified with my misery, before I used to get identified with my misery, now I am aloof, just a witness. Misery comes and goes, clouds gather and disperse, misery comes and goes, clouds gather and disperse. It has nothing to do with me. Before it used to affect me, remember before it used to affect me, now it does not affect me at all. I am just a mirror. I only reflect. If it is sunny, I reflect it. If it is cloudy, I reflect that too. His answer is tremendously beautiful. Before enlightenment, I was miserable. And after enlightenment too, I am miserable. Even being God is not a bed of roses, remember. Thorns are always there. But your vision changes. You look in a different way. Your attitude is different too. Certainly your approach is different because you are different. You are on a different plane, a watcher on the hill. And in the valley, the same world continues in its way unaffected. The same master was again asked the same question by another person and he said the same thing. I was miserable before my enlightenment and I am miserable after my enlightenment. But when he was asked to explain it further, he added something more this time. He replied, before I was miserable for myself, now I am miserable for you. This indeed is a revolution. To be miserable for oneself is ugly. To be miserable for others is compassion, is beauty and is grace. This is divine rebellion. Rebellion implies moving from identification to witnessing moving from getting lost in things and the world to a point where you are always alert, clear, transparent, unaffected, untouched and awake. You become a lotus leaf in the pond. It grows in the pond its roots are in the mud. In fact, neither the 